for this video I thought I would do uh, a nice unboxing uh, and review video of something that I've actually had for a long long time uh, that is one of my favourite DVD box sets ever and it's this one this is the real Ghostbusters DVD box set now the real Ghostbusters uh, is the Ghostbusters animated series uh, which started in 1986 and I have been a lifelong fan of Ghostbusters ever since I was a little kid um, it was my favourite movie uh, from when I was probably about seven years old and far too young to understand uh, the vast majority of the jokes in the film and it remains my favourite film to this day uh, probably tied along with Blade Runner um, but yeah this DVD set was released in 2008 by Time Life and it's a complete box set uh, of every episode of the real Ghostbusters animated series now I think this is an absolutely beautiful uh, DVD box set and I'm just going to talk you through all, all the things I, I really like about it now on this side uh, we have the logo obviously down here we have the name of the series presented in very kind of stubby cardboard sounds obviously kind of wavy tap it so down the bottom you know, get a very nice very low sound and up the top you still get quite a low sort of echoey sound Sort of shallow sound. There we are. And on the side, just for good measure. And the bottom. Now, uh, back to the outer case. Um, up here, uh, we have a lenticular display. Famous no ghost logo, and if you move it, I hope you can see this. If you move it, you can actually see him trying to saw himself out, which was one of the um, which was one of the sequences in the animated series that he would have put on between commercial breaks. This little guy, you would see him try to saw himself out, and then he would say, usually in the voice of Maurice LaMarche uh, we now return to the real Ghostbusters so that's just very nice I always I love lenticular panels <coughs> very satisfying sounds to rub and scratch going round to the front panel of the box set uh, obviously as you can probably tell uh, this is a rendering of the Ghostbusters firehouse uh, which is based uh, well in the movies was the hook and ladder 8 firehouse uh, in Tribeca in New York City which I have had the pleasure of visiting uh, this year and they, they sell patches and, and t-shirts uh, the proceeds of which all go to charity uh, which is a very lovely thing to do but they, in the animated series they based the building uh, the headquarters on that Hook and Ladder 8 building and you can see it here it looks very much like uh, the building 
in real life and from the films. They've added in a lot of detail uh, to this box set, a lot of little easter eggs. If you look down here, for example, you can see uh, the Ecto-1 uh, lights blaring, uh, ready to leave the firehouse. And the sort of the shinier parts are a slightly different material from the cardboard. I don't know if you can hear that. sort of duller sound from the shiny bits. Still quite nice though. And up here, if you have a look in the middle window, uh, you can see the Ghostbusters, well, mascot and sort of pet ghost Slimer. And he's hanging out there, up to some mischief, no doubt. And then of course the no ghost logo that they have on the front of the building there see just down here. Now moving round to the first side, um, we have a lot of detail here, we have a lot of detail, uh, as you can see the, we've got Slimer again, uh, you can see the side profile here, um, as well as down here in the bottom in the basement. Uh, you can see Janine Melnitz, uh, the Ghostbusters secretary. I think she's popping some bubblegum. Yeah, hard at work as always. Um, up here we have some various uh, locations within the firehouse. So we have the showers up in the top, and I think that's the bathroom. Looks like junk storage, kitchen. We have the arcade here communal area. I think this is, I think that's supposed to be the bedroom, but it's not very clear. Yes, I think it is. You can see sort of half a bed in this window. And it's very, very nice, very well realised. On the last side, uh, we have drawings, we have the, char the characters down the bottom here. Four. We have Ray Stantz, uh, Winston Zedmore, Peter Venkman, and uh, Egon Spengler. And of course we have Janine Melnitz, who we've already met, uh, wearing the pink Ghostbusters garb uh, that she would occasionally wear on the show when she followed the boys out on their uh, ghost uh, bustery, I guess. Uh, or ghost busting, is probably an easier way to put it if you're good at English. Uh, up here. We have another lenticular window with Slimer. And if we, I hope you can see it. If we change it, you can see he goes from happy to sort of bashful. Happy and bashful. Let me get a little bit out of focus there. Yeah, yeah, another lovely scratching sound. Nice little added extra. Here we have the actual roof. But inside it makes a very satisfying sound when you take the top off. individual series box sets first, um, or the volumes as it were. So here we have volume one, uh, and as you can see uh, on the front, very nice little display there. My favourite thing though is when you open these up, and it's five discs per volume. colours on the discs. But 
here's my favorite part. If you look inside the DVD cases, you can actually see some prop models and production drawings uh, of the Ghostbusters equipment. Now this one here, this is the PKE meter, or psychokinetic energy meter, and this is what they would use to actually detect paranormal and supernatural phenomena. Very highly detailed drawing, um, coming straight from the animation studio in Tokyo, uh, where I think it was DIC, the DIC company would ship out the animation uh, to Tokyo, which is pretty standard uh, in the American uh, animation industry. So on the back, uh, you can see the No Ghost logo here, being sucked down into the trap, just down the bottom there. And that is a motif uh, which will continue across the whole set. And the spine here, uh, and you can see, I don't know if you're able to see that, we have Peter Venkman uh, there on top of volume number one. The volume number two, nice blue colour. Uh, actually, this during this season, Janine changes her hair so her hair becomes a bit longer, a bit straighter, rather than the spiky sort of quiff that she has going on here. And we have Venkman slimed here, of course, as per usual. On the spine, uh, we have Egon Spengler, who was blonde uh, in the animated series, but was actually had brown hair in the movies, played by the late, great Harold Ramis. And the motif on the back, uh, continuing the No Ghost logo, being sucked down into the ghost trap. Now here, we have again five discs. like that, isn't it? Um, and here we have what they call the ghost detector. Now the ghost detector, I don't actually, I'm not sure when it appears in the animated series, I can't really remember, uh, but it does appear in the first movie uh, when Peter Venkman goes to Dana Barrett's apartment uh, for the first time and he takes this and when she asked him what it does, he says that he doesn't know uh, that it's just one of their little toys. And that's also the famous scene where he plays the two notes on the piano uh, to scare away the ghosts, uh, which is now something that I cannot resist doing uh, whenever I see a piano. I have to press those keys and say they hate this which might look very odd to people who don't know me or haven't internalised Ghostbusters the way that I have. We now move on to Volume 3 uh, with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man uh, on the top who is the manifestation of Gozer the Sumerian god, uh, who is the bad guy from the first uh, film, uh, and actually the video game, uh, if you play the video game. Uh, it's a very nice cover, it's yeah, got a lot of green about it, I get a feeling that's what colour the discs are going to be. On the back, uh, again, the No Ghost logo, being sucked down into the trap there. Ray stance 
as the one on the side. And inside, we get our three discs. And that little kind of horrible green colour. back of the proton pack here. As you can see it's uh, got a vent there, uh, which I don't think we ever see in the show. I think that was something that we just added to the production drawing for, you know, a bit of extra detail. So I don't know, I'll have to go back and rewatch it with a, an ego eye to figure out if and when they ever show the back of the proton pack. Now the Proton Pack actually, despite being probably the most famous uh, prop from the Ghostbusters franchise, uh, originally didn't have a name. Uh, in the first movie, uh, Dr. Venkman refers to it sort of uh, as the as a positron collider, uh, but that's just kind of what it does. That's not what it's called, and it wasn't until the animated series came out that they actually gave it the name Proton Pack. And here we have Volume 4, uh, where we can see Ray uh, firing his Neutrino Wand, uh, which is the sort of official name for the Proton Gun, uh, as well as Egon and Venkman there, ready with the trap, and Winston Zedmore, uh, he's driving. Uh, Winston is my uh, favourite Ghostbuster. I think that in the movie, uh, he gets all the best lines. Like, uh, at the end, when he says to Ray, Ray, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes, which I think is absolutely hilarious. On the side here, we have Winston, speed the devil, there he is. Um, and on the back, the motif continues, the no ghost logo being further pulled down into the trap. Inside, we've got a lovely blue colour for the discs. here uh, we have the neutrino wand uh, again with a lot more detail in the prop drawings uh, than probably ever really made it into the show um, they gave it a sort of redesign uh, for the cartoon I guess to make it maybe a little bit easier to draw uh, but it is quite different looking uh, from the, the one in the movie Still very cool. I really like these. Um, I love these prop drawings. I, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, that was volume number four. Finally, volume number five, which shows again Janine uh, in her full Ghostbusters gear, the four boys. Slimer uh, in the opening, and on the side we have Slimer on the spine. Right back here, uh, you can see the No Ghost logo has been completely sucked down into the trap, uh, which is now fizzing away. The trap is sparking away with energy as it does uh, when it's captured a ghost. Inside we have this red colour 
Twitter. There's only four discs in this one. So we can maybe get a lot more of the prop drawings. Uh, down here we have uh, some finalised prop drawings of the ghost trap. Here we have, I guess these are maybe, that's the inside tray of the trap, uh, so when it comes out, um, we have the inside of the trap here. Very lovely, very lovely box. One of my favourites. Now also included in this box set. A lovely little bonus disc. Um, it's got, uh, it's got interviews. It's got uh, trailers. Uh, it has original scripts for some of the episodes, um, as well as the series bible, uh, which is what TV show uh, writers use uh, to find out the rules as it were, of a, of a TV show. As well as, most excitingly, the long-lost original pilot for the show, which was four minutes long. Um, and the coolest thing about it is that the Ghostbusters looked a little bit different. They all wore the beige suits that they wore in the movies, uh, and Venkman looked a lot more like Bill Murray than he did in the show. Now, little, well, a fact about the show is that Peter Venkman, Bill Murray's character, uh, was voiced by a gentleman called Lorenzo Music, who was also the voice of Garfield. And the story goes that he was replaced in the third scene because Bill Murray said, why does Harold's character sound like Harold, and my character sound like Garfield, and so he was replaced. Uh, but no one knows if that's the official story. It's just one of these rumours surrounding Bill Murray. Something else that comes with the box set is this lovely little episode guide. book which as you can see inside has an introduction from the special features producer credits for the DVD and it has credits and synopsis is for each of the individual episodes and the box set. Full colour, lovely glossy little book. Absolutely stunning. enjoyed my ASMR unboxing uh, and review of the Real Ghostbusters DVD collection.